Welcome our video friends. Uh, we are today recording in the Sumter National Forest uh, and uh, this is April the 7th, a beautiful time of the year that we're into and we're just so thankful that we we have uh, this beautiful day before us. We had a lot of rain last night. It was cloudy this foggy this morning, uh, but it's all clearing up now making a beautiful day. And this is unusual that I'd be out getting to video on a Thursday. Most of the time I'm working. Uh, but my jobs didn't demand that I be on them today. <clears throat> I'll be on the phone working here in a little while. But uh, <clears throat> as for today, I didn't have to have my physical presence on the job site. And I've also had a real blessing today and this week. <clears throat> one of my daughters, who is a missionary, uh, who is temporary in from the field that she serves in. And has been driving me around this week and has been with me and it's been good to be around her and to have her company <clears throat> and uh her and her husband have served now for many years as missionaries in another part of the world and uh we don't see her all the time but today with all the new technology that we have we get to communicate and send uh pictures one to the other uh, just in a matter of seconds uh, they can uh, appear to where she in the places she lives and so uh we're thankful for Mary and what God is doing with her and her husband. And uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful work, and we do appreciate it as well. But, you know, my friends, uh, we want to get right in the Bible this morning in John chapter number 5. One of the greatest chapters in all the Bible is John chapter 5. And uh, we're down in verse 25. Uh, verse 24 and verse 25 are great, great verses in this Bible. I mean, they're wonderful verses. They're like the gospel wrapped within one verse. Uh, verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Right here, you have the gospel story right here in this one verse of, ch of chapter 5, verse 24. He that heareth my word, uh, and faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, and... Um, and right here it just says, He that hear and believeth. Well, uh, we know that we can do that. We can do that. I heard one day. I believed one day. And God saved my soul. And then he says right here, The promise for him that would believe upon him hath everlasting life. And then, uh, how long is he going to live? Forever, everlasting. And then, what about his penalty? Uh, there is no penalty. The Bible said that... Uh, uh, he is not come into condemnation. So the wrath of God that once time was upon the unbeliever and one time upon myself is passed away. I'm never going to feel the wrath of God upon me. His condemnation is no longer uh, appointed toward me. And toward anyone who believes upon the Lord Jesus Christ, we have escaped. We have been forgiven. We have been cleansed by his precious work and his blood because we have believed. And it's very simple. Now, for those of you who think you're working your way into heaven, uh, you can't put any works into this verse. It's not here. And you don't go adding that to it. And that is, uh, when you add anything to grace, you have, you have taken away the teaching of the Bible on the grace of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It's very clear. I mean, I, I appreciate people and their, <clears throat> and their uh, those who are zealous to live for the Lord. I deeply do. And, uh, and I think I'm to somewhat so myself. And there are various things that I do and various things that I do not do in my worship of the Lord. Uh, but uh, none of those add nor none of those take away from my salvation that I have in Christ Jesus. The fact remains that I believed. I believed. And I have everlasting life. I'm not working to keep it. I'm not working to get it. It's already been given to me. And as far as the wrath of God that was one time upon me, uh, that's all in the past. My sins will never, for, will never condemn me. And uh, they're all in the past. Jesus has forgiven me of all of my sins. And, uh, and I'm not going to face condemnation. When I die, there'll be no hell. It'll be heaven's bright shore. And so it's a wonderful verse. It tells us right here in verse 24, but it's passed from death unto life. That is a one of the most wonderful verses in all the Bible. Uh, verse 24 of uh, John chapter 5. I mean, it is a great verse. Uh, that verse alone, if you had no other verse from God, 
but this you would have enough. But we got a whole Bible that goes with it, explains so many details. But right here we're told of the basics of the plan of God for salvation and uh, the basics of it. And uh, it's, <clears throat> it is wonderful that we have that. If, I, if you just said, well, you can just have one verse out of the Bible. So give me John 5, 24. I'll take it. I'll take it. If you're going to take my Bible away from me and you let me have one verse, I would say, give me John 5, 24, and I'll hang on to that to my dying day, and I'll die, and things will be well. And so uh, uh, we've got many other great verses as well. And this, if you notice this right here, uh, the Lord Jesus himself spake these words, spoke these words, spoke them unto the Jews. And these Jews, of course, rejected that. They wanted none of that. And as we'll see in just the next few verses, you'll see that the Jews uh, were strongly opposed to him and found fault at the Lord and uh, spoke against him. Well, it's, it was a terrible thing and bad for them too. But his words right here are spoken are spoken by a holy God. And as you read these, you think about them, and you see in this message that the Lord answers those Jews there in Jerusalem that were before him. And he gave him them answers and words that only a holy God could give to people, to men. And because he was God. And then let's look in verse 25. The Bible says, Verily, verily again. That means truly, truly. I say unto you, The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they which hear shall live. What about that? Uh, and that's another promise of the resurrection morning. And I'm sure you've all heard of the resurrection. And, I, and, and there's going to be a resurrection one of these days. Uh, the Lord's going to come back. With the sound of, <clears throat> of the trumpet and the voice of the archangel. And the trumpet's going to sound and the dead are going to get up. And right here he said, the hour is coming. And now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. Oh, uh, you just think the cemetery is the end of it. But not for we believers. You may think when you say goodbye and walk away from that cemetery. That it's all, it's all in the past uh, for your loved ones. Uh, but my friends, it's just the beginning. One of these days, uh, the Lord's going to come. He's going to speak. And the dead are going to hear his voice. And they're going to get up. Now, we could talk for a long time about the resurrection. There's a lot of verses in the Bible about the resurrection of the believer. And there's also a resurrection uh, for the unbeliever. We'll read about that in another verse or two. But thankfully for the resurrection of the believer, I have loved ones that trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, they're buried up in North Carolina. I could take you to the graveside. I could point you to the place where my uh, grandmother and grandfather Johnson are buried and where my uncle uh, John, uh, Howard is buried. I could show you where uh, many others are buried. But those that I know that have faith in Jesus Christ when they die, and some of them have been laying there in that sod now, their bodies for a long, long time. But one of these days, the Lord's going to speak they're going to hear his voice. They're going to get up. Those very bodies that were buried are going to get up. And there'll be a new body, a, a, a new celestial body, not a terrestrial body like we have now. Be a new, be a new body that will live forever and forever and forever. You see, and I know the skeptics say, well, those bodies are all decomposed. I want you to know that the Lord knows where every particle is. And it, it's not been destroyed. It's still intact. He said, well, I, that body was cremated and, uh, and uh, the ashes were scattered out over the sea. I want you to know the Lord knows where every particle of every, of every element uh, still is on this earth. He knows it all. And he's able to bring it all back together and to breathe into it again to live. And when we hear his word, we, if we happen to be past then, we shall live with him forever and ever. We, there will be a resurrection morning much into a world it's much better than the one that we're now in and i'm thankful to have that promise he makes us this promise right here in verse 25 he said and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of god and they that hear shall live what about that that is a promise you just thank you buried those loved ones that trust in the lord you just think they're gone they're not they're with the lord and one day they're going to hear his voice and the sound of the archangel and the trumpet. And they're going to get up. And uh, at the resurrection 
at the at the uh, at the death of Jesus Christ, there were many who were resurrected in Jerusalem, went about through the city. Many, the Bible said, were resurrected. And as we think about this, and we think about the resurrection from the dead, I mean that's unthinkable, isn't it? It is for we on this earth. <clears throat> but one of these days, it's going to be a fact, <clears throat> a, a pure fact. And uh, those loved ones that you said goodbye to, you're going to see them again. You're going to see them again. And uh, my wife will see her father and her uh, and her mother again one of these days, and she'll know them. We'll be known as we're known. She will know them. And uh, they've been with the Lord now. Her mother's been with the Lord about 11 years. She loved her mother deeply. Her father's been gone with the Lord now about two years, and she loved him very deeply. And it was hard when she said to say goodbye. But one of these days, they're going to get up from those tombs. They're going to get up from those graves, and they're going to live. And with the Lord forever and forever, and she'll be joined with them. Verse 26, uh, For as the Father have life in himself, so have he given to the Son to have life in himself. You're talking about <clears throat> an everlasting, ever-living God from eternity past to eternity future is what you're talking about here. And the Lord is saying this. He, he knew the Father, and he was. He said, I and the Father are one. And as, as in the early verses of this uh message said he says the father uh he said i do as the father would will and i know if the will of the father and he does and uh there's no separating jesus christ uh from him he said if you honor me you've honored the father so it is and uh, right here he says as the father hath life in himself where did life begin <clears throat> it's all it's all come from god almighty and eternity past and uh don't worry about where God got his life from. He's just always been the ever-existing one, the everlasting one. And he shall forever be. Nothing's beyond his power. Nothing shall ever overthrow him. And we shall, we shall no doubt uh, be with him throughout all time and eternity. And I think as he has life in himself to give to us life, I think that we too uh, will uh, be busy in eternity to come. I don't think we're going to be sitting around... Uh, uh, just dabbling in the uh, river of life and just eating from the tree of life and just uh, staying in our mansion forever and be forever there. I think the Lord has got much work for us all to do. I think we'll be uh, busy, very busy, uh, perhaps even on other planets or other universes uh, doing his bidding for him or perhaps his building. Uh, perhaps all kinds of things will be done. And so uh, we, we long for the day <clears throat> that we will be with the Lord and be doing those very things. And so, my friends, as we <clears throat> as we think about eternal life and the Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> we know that we shall be with Him forever and forever. And uh, don't pay my phone no attention now, my friends. Just uh, ignore that, please. I've got a call to return here in a minute, and I'll get back with you guys. But nonetheless, uh, eternal life we shall have, and I think we'll be busy. And then verse 27, uh, notice this right here, uh, and have given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Uh, all judgment has been committed to the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. All of it has. And uh, he will be the final judge of mankind. And, uh, <clears throat> and all that we've done will stand before the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ and be judged for what we've done. We'll be tried by fire. And that which is gold, silver, and precious metal shall remain. That which is uh, uh, straw and brimstone and, uh, and, uh, and, and tires uh, shall all be burned away. And so shall it be when we stand before the Lord. We will not be judged as to whether or not we're going to heaven or hell. We'll be judged by our works that we've done here. Uh, the matter of us going to heaven or hell can be determined by you right here, right now. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, do so today. Call upon him while you can and settle the matter now for all time and all eternity. Ask Jesus to come into your heart and to forgive you of your sins. And he will do that. And, uh, and he'll make a new creature of you in Christ Jesus forever and forever and forever. And you shall be eternally with the Lord. Eternity can be settled and determined by you right now so call upon the lord while you can 
And there's a reason that you're watching these videos and hearing this message. So my friends, call upon him. Thank you.